you didn't hear about it because uh, the editors cut that part out. But anyways, we were talking about people who say bad things and radio hosts. And would you look at that? It comes all the way back around to our good friend of the stream, Matt Walsh. You, you, you know Matt Walsh. You love Matt Walsh. What, a, what an incredible guy with so many incredible political ideas. Anyways, uh, Matt Walsh has a very long history with speaking out his mind, and his mind hasn't been right for an incredibly long time. But um, something that we didn't know was his time before he was on uh, The Daily Wire, because a lot of us, you know, a lot of us be still believe that time just kind of began back in 2016, 2015. That's when like history started, right? Um, 2015, 2016, and everything kind of before that wasn't real. And now everything after that, that's when things have kind of picked up. But um, Matt Walsh did actually exist in the land before time. And Matt Walsh does actually have a long history. And it seems like that history has finally been called into question. And it's back into the news. And, and a lot of things that he used to believe has been uncovered. Because his history as a radio host has now been exposed by Media Matters. Who's put together a really interesting article on the wacky and wild things that Matt Walsh has said. Back when he was the co-host of the Matt and Crank program. A political radio show podcast thing that he used to do before he was on Daily Wire. Matt Walsh defended political violence and teenage pregnancy, shocked an intern with a stun gun, and performed racist impressions of black men, and said that we probably lost our republic after Reconstruction. Just incredibly interesting views from a good friend of the stream matt walsh and so i want to go through this entire list and see what's and see what's going on media matters is a pretty interesting place and uh, uh the great thing about it is that they don't have opinions they just post what conservatives say you can't be mad at media matters all they do is repost things that conservatives say and believe how can you be mad at that if you're mad at media matters hmm, you're just mad at what the right actually says it's weird how that works out isn't it Anyways, from early 2010 through August 2011, Matt Walsh co-hosted a radio show called The Matt and Crank Program, along with Andrew Crankmer <laughs> at WZBH, uh, The Beach 93.5 FM, based in Georgetown, Delaware. Delaware? Oh my gosh. He, was, he lived in Delaware back when uh, Joe Biden was his senator. Wild. And the show featured uh, the worst of Matt Walsh's bluster and bigotry without the production value given to his current work as a host of the daily wire when he was hired in 2017 incredible stuff recently walsh has been helping lead the campaign against children's hospitals providing gender affirming care uh and we talked about this stuff already we can skip forward a little bit the reviews uh a review of walsh's commentary for the matt and crank program reveals that the pundit had previously praised a violent political action, saying that enacting change means that you have to make people hurt. Holding signs and yelling loudly will not make anyone hurt. The current Daily Wire, just uh, also, just so you know, this is, uh, this is a little thing that we call uh, terrorism. I, I, I'm not sure if anybody has understood that, but this is a little thing that we call in the business uh, terrorism. Making random people hurt, making civilians hurt, it hurt in the political, for, for our political ends. This is what we call in the business terrorism. The current Daily Wire personality and what a woman is filmmaker also claimed that we probably lost a republic after reconstruction and that as the Anglo-Saxons, we were the original Americans. Die off, our identity and culture goes with it. POV, just normie, not, normie Nazi talking points. As you know, normal Nazi uh, talking points from a normie conservative, as you know. Many people say that uh, Matt Walsh is just your average conservative. He is not. I think even Matt Walsh agree agrees that he's like not a normie conservative, you know? He's decidedly to the right of the Republican Party. Any position that you can imagine the Republican Party takes, even the worst ones, I can promise you, Matt Walsh has an even worse political take than that. He's he's bad. He's bad. I mean, he is literally a fascist, okay? That he calls himself that. He is a actual. He's not joking when he says theocratic fascist. That's what that's what he is. That's unironically what he is. He wants like a theocratic anti-liberal anti-liberal democracy state that controls everyone and um, follows like a sort of like Catholic biblical law that everybody must abide by or they go to jail or deported or they get killed. That's like actually his preferred form of governance. 
And he performed racist impressions to defend teenage pregnancy and marriage, saying, at about 16, you're, you're an adult, that he, is what he said, who is mature and can make decisions. It's just recently where all of a sudden we're all, you know, we're all R word until we're 25. So, you know, just incredibly, incredibly interesting stuff coming from Matt Walsh. Walsh additionally encouraged subordinates to participate in sexually demanding stunts, coercing an intern to expose himself and allowing Matt Walsh to shock him with a stun gun in the ass. Normal stuff from normal conservative. Normal stuff from normal conservative. So let's uh, let's uh, hop into some of the things that he's done. Matt Walsh's violent political worldview, you have to make people hurt. Let's take a look at this really quick. Well, the, our founding fathers had very specific goals in mind that they wanted to accomplish. It wasn't a generalized sense of outrage. It was, these are our goals that we want to accomplish. And by the way, they were willing to back it up with guns and violent force. Uh, if you want extreme things to happen, you have to be willing to take to go to extremes. And the civil rights movement, they had specific goals. They boycotted. The people that were oppressing them, they made them hurt. They didn't just hold signs, they made them hurt. Um, so I would say that it's time for extreme measures. I'm not advocating violence, but why are we limiting ourselves? What, uh what the hell is he talking about? So this shit's incoherent. He literally just admitted that he wanted to do political violence. And then he's talking about like, this, I don't know, for someone like Matt Walsh to come up and talk about like the civil rights movement, hilarious. Anyways, anyways, cause he disagrees with like 1964 civil rights act. He's actually talked about it before. Anyways, the like civil rights movement, its base was not like political violence or like, I don't know what he means by making people hurt, right? Like what, what is like making people hurt? He's like, don't, don't do political violence, but why are we limiting ourselves? Are you talking about just like boycotting? Is that what you mean by making people hurt? Just like not giving them money? This is, I don't know, this is odd. Uh, I'm just, I'm just posing one possibility here. Let's say that next uh, tax day, what if 10 million people didn't file their taxes? Yo. What if 10, I know everyone's like, well, you gotta file your taxes. Well, our founding fathers, everyone keeps bringing up our founding fathers. They were willing to pick up guns kill people for what they wanted a sign won't do it and calling your congressman won't do it um i don't know how can you like uh, like i'm not advocating for political violence anyways peaceful means of protest will never work holy shit lefty uh lefty matt walsh antifa matt walsh antifa walsh hello he's here antifa walsh that shit's crazy Here's another one. So this is a, a clip from his Matt and Crank show. So this is back from the Matt and Crank show as well. On air, Walsh expanded and doubled down on this comment, saying that if you want extreme change, you must make extreme action. You have no, you have to make people hurt. And adding that we probably lost our republic after reconstruction, seemingly criticizing the country's first uh, attempt at a multiracial democracy after the Civil War, and further derided members of the so-called Tea Party movement for not willing to do what they, the Founding Fathers, did. Uh, let's, just, let's just take a look. But what I was trying to say, uh, if you want extreme change, you must take extreme- Also, he does look like a, he does look like a reject from like Jersey Shores, you know what I mean? It's like backwards, backward. This is back when Twink Walsh was a thing. I like, we've, I've only shown you guys on uh, Twink Walsh on stream once, uh, but Twink Walsh was back back in like 20, like pre 2017, like 20, like, like 2009 to 2000, like six, six, 15, 16, like around there. That's when Twink Walsh was in, uh, in full effect. He, he, t he looks like the type of guy who um, is proud about how many shot uh, beers he can shotgun at once and is and like has to be kept away from the girls who are like passed out on the couch you know what i mean he looks like a you're right he does look like a line cook you're right he do look you're right it's, it's the line cook phenotype he do look like a line cook at like red lobsters or something at olive garden i see you i see you it's right anyway no shitting on our line cooks our line cooks actually work hard my walls does not
stream action. What you have to do is look at the situation and decide what exactly you want to have happen. And then you have to honestly approach it and say, what do we have to do to make this happen? But it is, in fact, true that you have to make people hurt. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But holding signs and uh, yelling loudly will not make anyone hurt. And it's not going to get anything changed. Uh, calling your congressman probably makes you feel good about yourself. And I'm very happy for you. But that doesn't really get anything done. And you're not going to change the system by calling a congressman. And you're not going to change the system by voting out a few incumbents. And you're not going to change the system by voting in Republicans. I think we're at the point now where we have to purge the system of all parties, okay? And everyone says, well, it's naive to vote for uh, an independent. All right, well, if that's the attitude you're going to take, that any measure of extreme change is just naive, then what are you doing? What's the point? What is the point of even trying? Most people will admit. It's wild. He do, he do be sounding like a Bernie or Buster, you know what I mean? This is wild, you know? We hear this a lot from, like, lefties these days. Right. And some of this is true. So, some of this is true. The same like you're not going to change the system by like voting in some people and voting out some people. That's true. Right. Um, the only problem is like a lot of people are trying to change the system, but most people are trying to change the system to make it worse. Like Matt Walsh, he's changed. He wants to change the system system to make it worse. Tucker Carlson, uh, like Laura Ingram, a bunch of other like Nazis online. They want to change the system to specifically make it a, a worse place and for uh, more bigotry to be able to thrive that because that's what they run on but yeah it's uh it's, it's wild it's wild stuff coming from walshy boy here crazy memes he's taking dab hits in the walk-in freezer and being the weird <laughs> being weird to the 17 year old hostess <laughs> Churro! Churro! i've never heard something more factually true in my entire life holy shit he's the lion cook who's taking dab hits in the walk-in freezer and hitting on the 17 year old hostess Good Lord, I can't. I've, I've, hey, I can drive you home. Hey, ah, uh, your mom's late to pick you up. I can drive you home. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> oh no. Anyways, that we've been on this path not for a, a year because of Obama, not for ten Obama. years because of Bush, not for twenty years because of Clinton, not Reagan, not Carter. We've been on this path for 100 years or more. We probably lost our republic after Reconstruction. If you want actual change that isn't going to reverse itself in 10 years or 5 years or in 1 year, then you do have to look at extreme action. And I will tell you the extreme action that I am now referring to. What needs to happen, I think first... Lost our country after Reconstruction. But we stopped being violent after Reconstruction? Very weird. Very, very, very strange. Very, very, very wild. Very, very curious points coming from Matt Walsh here. Lost our country after reconstruction. Why is that? First and, and, and foremost, and it, does, and it starts with taxes, doesn't it? It started that way with the revolutionaries. And by the way, I'm not the, you go to these tea parties, you got people there literally dressed up like it's a costume party, dressed up like, like our founding fathers, dressed they up like Samuel like Adams and, and so forth. They're the ones that keep harkening back to the revolutionary times. You're the ones, tea party people, that are comparing yourself in, an, in a not subtle way at all. To the revolutionaries. But so, then you forget what they did to accomplish their goal. Right. I'm saying, okay, you guys are dressing up like revolutionaries. You're calling this the Tea Party. Don't you understand what they did? Even the Tea Party was an illegal act. It was trespassing and vandalism. Don't you get that? Okay, you don't, don't compare yourself to them because you're not willing to do what they did. Kill them. Boy, it's time to bring back tarring and feathering. Sheesh. Well, she's called uh, for and defended political violence in many of his most recent examples, calling for real men to assault drag queens, defending uh, secession after January 6th and storming of the cap, sorry, the January 6th storming of the Capitol, and defending violence against abortion providers in response to mass shootings. America is coming apart at the seams. We don't want to admit it, but it's true. Eventually, we'll have to talk seriously about secession and national divorce. I've been saying this for years. Maybe it's time. Maybe the time has finally come. I don't know. Conservatives love talking about this shit. They, they love talking about the idea of, like, getting away from, like, the left. The reason is because, like, they want to make the country worse and the left won't allow them to so they have to they have to they have to do something they're like i can't we, it's, it's the same it's the same reason for why the confederates wanted to leave the union uh back back during the civil war they wanted to continue to rape murder and torture people as a job the left didn't want sorry uh i don't want to say the left and right the uh the union didn't want it to continue as much and so they're like fuck if that's the case 
We, we just have to do a war so we can continue to rape, murder, and torture people. Oh, it's, the, it's just the same memes today. I want to make the world worse. I want to, like, violate human rights. The, the, like, uh, the, the normie Americans won't let us, so we have to do it. Instead of, instead of just understanding that I'm wrong and changing my opinion, we just have to, like, do a divorce so I can take this land and start, like, uh, committing crimes against humanity. This is back in 2015. If any side should tone down their rhetoric because of the PP attack, this is the Planned Parenthood attack, it's the sides whose rhetoric explicitly condones the murder of humans. So, th so this is him being like, we need to not tone down, we need to tone up our rhetoric on like abortion clinics to bring about more like, you know, for, for more attacks. Listen, I don't condone attacks. I just want more of the language that brings about attacks. You know, normal, normal positions. Interesting fact, Planned Parenthood kills a hundred times more people in a day than the alleged anti-abortion extremists have killed in 40 years. So like the, the conservatives do commit violent attacks in an attempt to murder healthcare providers and reproductive system providers. But you know, it's an ah, what, ah, ah, whatever, whatever. Cause like abortion is just worse. Uh, and this is in response to the uh, three people who got killed in Colorado Springs Planned Parenthood back in 2015. Yes, it is perfectly appropriate in time to point out that Planned Parenthood is a demonic cartel of bloodthirsty butch. He, he's just like, he would fit perfectly on Alex Jones. Demonic cartel of bloodthirsty butchers. Just, just like, meh, with like a cleaver, just like chopping up babies. Is it throwing them in my salad? Are they eating them in the basement as well? Is that what's going on? They're drinking, they're cracking their heads open and slurping out the adrenochrome. Very normal Matt Walsh. Very normal Matt Walsh uh, memes going on here, as you can tell. So this is the cl this is the audio clip from Media Matters, but it's uh it was put in a different format. It's in a cut down format that's uh available for Twitter. And this is uh this is Matt Walsh back on his Matt and Crank show, talking about sixteen year olds. So. You know how that works out with these people. Uh, prepare yourself. None. It is not. In fact, ever since the beginning of time, teenage girls have been getting pregnant. We're off to a bad start. Chat, we're off to a real bad start. <laughs> it, it used to be more common. The, the peak, ever since they started keeping records of these things, which they only started doing recently, like in the 20th century. Uh, but ever since they started keeping records, in 1957 was the peak for teenage pregnancy. 1957. I don't Not like 2009. Well, back not then, today. All of them were supposed to have kids. Like, that's well, when you on. had kids. That's my point. Okay. Um, so to all of a sudden act like this phenomenon 16? of girls getting pregnant at, that, at, at a young age that we consider young, 16 or 17, Baby, to, act, to act like it's a new thing is ridiculous. It's always been that way. Uh, even biologically, and, and this is me just stating, I'm, I'm just, right now I'm going to start by just stating I'm just facts. Stay, I'm just stating So fact facts. number one, He's it's not a facts. new phenomenon. Fact number two, in fact, it's a phenomenon that was more common earlier in history and for, you know, the first six to 10,000 years of human existence, it was That's a normal thing. That's not good. Uh, fact three, girls between the ages of like 17 and 24 is when they're it. technically most fertile. Yeah. I got any girls in chat who who be feeling real fertile up until he said that? I, I hate this. This is a freak show. Why do all of them have weird pedo takes? Why? Why do all of them have, or, e or my bad, I'm sorry, weird ebophilia takes? Matt Walsh, your average anime fan. <laughs> well, technically, 17-year-olds, uh, that's when they become the most fertile. This gave me endometriosis. <laughs> my eggs! The eggs are just, they're dying. They're the, my, the eggs are dying. This is horrendous. 16 are when her eggs are the most ripe for the picking. So yeah, and like, sure, 1957, whatever is when they, we had the most pregnancies and sure, 16 year old child pregnancies. And also that's when we had the most amount of like fetal mortality and like, like infant mortality. Just so you know, that's when, that's when you were like pumping out like 19 kids because you knew that half of them were going to die, right? We don't do that anymore because we can take care of children and people actually want to have like their life sorted before they get children, right? It's it's just it's just it's just nasty. It's just all oh, this is gross. Are you Matt Walsh, are you saying then that you would happily take a 16-year-old bride if you if you lived in like the 19 in like 1950s or whatever? 
in like the 1900 early 1900s 1800s or whatever you get yourself a you get yourself a nice uh a fertile 16 year old bride to knock up since that's uh that that's the norm and it's weird how everybody will want to start advocating for these things being like so cool and so normal but then the second you ask them a question like that they're like ah no no what no never what what nah come on let's let's be on they would they would if it wasn't for the laws of these lands these people would be like scooping up 14 year olds out of high out of, out of, out of elementary school okay that's biological that's a fact all right i'm just stating facts that's all i'm doing he's just dropping but what happened recently facts. and this is the the fourth fact recently in the last 30 years or so we decided that that's way too young to start a family why and uh because now the divorce we, rates would probably go up and once you're that young you can't really make sure that well, you know no that's girls are no 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 girls were getting married early and mar what the fuck he's pushing wait he's pushing back against arguments against child marriage he's like well like divorce is bad and the girls that age they just don't they they can't like make up their they, 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 they don't have the proper decision making to be able to like stay in a relationship. No, no. Before then, marriages were great. Your first cousin would be would be married to his uh, 13 year old uh, 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 other first cousin. And they'd be producing a web, uh, 13 web toed kids that all die by the age of three months all the time. That's what life was like. What's happening? I don't. That's bad. That's bad. Things like assault, things like murder. Like all all forms of assault, uh, like like child endangerment, fetal mortality, all of these things were so much worse back in the day. Welcome to Yal Qaeda. You're right, this is Yal Qaeda, bro. Welcome to Yal Qaeda. They want their 16 year old child brides to be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen, trying to cook uh food that she hasn't even been old enough to be uh to know exists yet. Marriages were lasting longer. You very rarely hear about like these these relationships that go to their uh, what is it your diamond anniversary your 50th anniversary and all this. I, it yeah, you didn't live until you were 50 back then, bro. But you didn't live to have a 50th uh, anniversary, bro. What are you talking? <laughs> Nobody did. Uh, you at the age of 23 marry your 14 year old cousin. Your parents died at age 50 from dysentery. You you plow the fields until your surf um you plow the fields until your uh landlord comes and uh, uh shakes you down for tax money. You're poor. Yeah, and you're poor. You're foodless. You're penniless. You have 13 kids that you need to feed, and winter is coming. Life was good. It's that's a dying breed of people out yeah, there. Yeah, and those all were all people that got married very young. That's why. That's why they're that, still alive. Yeah, that's why you could have someone in their seventies who's celebrating their, you know, fifty-fifth uh, wedding anniversary because they got married when they were teenagers. So what I'm saying is that the problem is not per se teenage pregnancy. It's unwed pregnancy. That's the problem in society. It's only problematic when 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 you are not married and you don't have the man there to help you take care of the kids because he's a coward and the reason why we have that now are for two reasons because we have we have in matt walsh is pro child pregnancy matt walsh is unironically pro child pregnancy wow wow like i knew that it was like i knew that it was bad but i didn't think it was like straight up pro child pregnancy bad like child like him saying that child pregnancy was not the problem it's actually the fact that the children aren't married to each other is the problem i don't know apparently so how does this how does how does this work with like you being uh you being like you going through like surgery or whatever what while, while you're little what well, not even little when you're like 16 or something right like because he's gonna he's gonna say this and i know for a fact he still believes this shit how are you gonna be like children like 16 year olds can like marry each other and have kids uh with with like uh, uh, adults and each other but they can't agree to have a surgery they can't consent to a surgery or like they're not even to a surgery to be put on like hormone blockers okay all right pov i am i am matt walsh and i am very disgusting no wonder he's against like uh against like the idea of trans people he doesn't want he thinks he thinks that his stock of like uh 16 year old girls is being uh is being diminished since they're becoming like a trans men. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. Have we put the pieces together? Have we, have we finally put the pieces together? I hate that. I hate everything about that. That's, that's bad. He's like, keep them 16 year old girls pure for me, boy. <laughs> Technically that's when you're the most fertile.
Okay, interesting stuff. Uh, Wolves has repeatedly defended sexualization or sexual abusers of children in the more recent past, saying that Catholic Church, uh, we've talked about this before, the Catholic Church abuse scandal is not a problem of pedophilia. So just so you know, there were, how many people came out? How many people, was it like 400,000? 400,000 people came out to say that they were sexually abused when they were children by like the, by like the, like European Catholic Church or like the French Catholic Church or something, something along those lines. And he said that actually the people sexually abusing children scandal is not actually a pedophilia problem. It's actually a gay people problem. He's, he unironically believes if you just get rid of the gay people, you'll get rid of the abuse. Because only the gay people do the abuse. The straight people don't. And he unironically believes that, uh, that like, ab the abuse didn't start to happen until the church started to allow gay people to be, like, pastors and clerics and stuff like that. It's bad. The problem is gay priests. And saying in the response to the sexual abuse scandal in the Boy Scouts of America. Yeah, he did the same thing with uh, uh, BSA. Uh, it was a lesson to all of us that surrendering to the left will lead to being completely obliterated. So he's like, uh, the left, the left are the ones who support like the abuse of these children. Just so you know, all right, what we learned, what we learned now is that actually Matt Walsh doesn't have a problem with adults having sex with like minors because he, he agrees with the point that like saying that these, these kids are the most fertile, most fertile at 16 or 17. So that's when you need to be able, that's when these girls need to be able to start to pump out kids. So his problem isn't actually the pedophilia. His problem is like the thinking that people are gay, which is wild, which is wild. He's pro pedophilia as long as it's not gay. All right. POV, very normal conservative thinking. Very normal. Walsh initially defended Josh Drugger after the reality TV star was accused of sexual abuse of children, minimizing the allegations before later issuing a retraction. Once it came to light that Drugger had also cheated on his wife as an adult, the Daily Wire host uh, also minimized the Me Too movement, suggesting it's a hysterical witch hunt. Um, POV, just pro-rape. POV, while I do my pro-rape. So this is back in 2015, okay? Uh, the druggers aren't hypocrites. Progressives. <laughs> uh, what the fuck? What the, what the fuck? Joshua James Drugger is an American convicted sex offender and former reality TV personality for TLC. Of course it's TLC. The series 19 Kids and Counting. Uh, Josh Drugger was the ex executive producer of this he uh he had a pack sponsored family research council from june 2013 to 15 he left the position when news broke that he molested multiple underage girls including a victim under five years old when he was between when uh, he was aged 14 and 15 good fucking lord good good lord Jigger's public uh Public woes uh were named the 10 big were one of the 10 big scandals of 2015 holy shit and then he says, the druggers aren't hypocrites, progressives are. A Christian failing to live up to his faith does not make him a hypocrite. It makes him cowardly, perhaps. It makes him selfish. It makes him flawed. It makes him sinful. What is, what is, what is happening? What is, what, what's, what, huh? What? Huh? It's just, he, ch children, how many, what? What? We all just read the same thing, right? This is back in 2015. This isn't even that long ago. This isn't even that long ago. But now you probably heard that Josh Drugger, the oldest son of the 19 kids in Counting family, did some very bad things a long time ago. Apparently, when he was 14, Josh found several young girls, including a number of his young sisters. Oh my gosh. After admitting to these acts, his parents presented the situation to their church leadership and uh, Josh was sent to a family friend in Little Rock where he spent several months doing physical labor. But he was sent to a work camp. Work will set you free. His parents brought him to a state trooper. The trooper talked to the boy. The behavior stopped there and Josh has been upfront about it to everyone who actually needs to know about this information according to his wife. He confessed uh, to his past sins uh, to her. It's, oh, oh my gosh. The whole scandal exploded all over the media yesterday. The backlash has been severe, not because Josh's actions were terrible, though they were, of course, but because the druggers were a prominent uh, Christian family who regularly spoke out. Oh my gosh. 
It certainly hasn't gone to waste. Just cursory look at the biosphere. The social media feeds reveals legions of people are positively uh, giddy about the situation, relieved as static. Finally, uh, they say these Christians have been proven uh, frauds. They're sinners, hypocrites. Jesus is a lie. Christianity is false. The drugger has uh, already lost his job. Okay, so Christian failing to live up to his faith does not make him a hypocrite. Like, okay, here, pause. Pause, 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 pause. Because I, I hate, because I hate everything about this. All right, I hate everything about this. Here's one thing. All right, did, did this need to be made pri uh, public? There's a good argument for it, for it being public. All right, because it's something that you that a lot of people should know a bit about before they interact with him in in like privately as well. That's not to say that like nobody can grow or anything or like become better or not like continue this type of behavior because that's definitely possible he was what was it uh what they say 14 15 so there's a lot of room for him to like become better and, and not and not do this again and i can understand the point when we're just simply criticizing people saying using this just as like a a, a moment to say christianity bad instead of just like coming out against like the actual behavior but like it's it's like I don't know like I feel like it's a lot of like side swiping the actual just like kind of swerving around like the actual problem here where, where you write an article all of, like this is what you get outraged about but you wouldn't write an article about like how bad the actual like actions were or anything I know I'm opening myself up to criticism here but let me be honest with you if my own son god forbid came to me and admitted to doing what Joshua what Josh Drogger did I don't know that I'd immediately run to the cops. Would you? Is it really that simple? The decision to have your child arrested as a sex offender would be an automatic thing to you? Really? I guess I'm a horrible person then. I don't know uh, about all the details. Nobody outside the family ever does or ever will, but it appears that Josh's parents attempted to address the situation within their family before going to the church and then eventually law enforcement officer again, there uh, might be parts of the story that would change my mind for the analysis, but right now, based on what we know, it seemed like they handled it the right way, or at least I can't say that for sure uh, that I would know any better, that I would go about it in a better way than they did. Um, okay, Matt Walsh. Okay, okay, Matt Walsh. Okay, we need some uh, fat therapy session at least. Yeah, like a really long therapy session. I I'm not sure if like, having like a 14 year old be on like the sex offender registry is like the, the best solution to this, but I don't have like an, an ar a big argument in, in either way. It seemed like a big failing of like the parents, if I'm going to be honest, but I don't know, like I would like the, 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 like the families definitely need some, like some restitution there. Cause no matter who's doing the crime, the crime is still has like a lifelong effect on the victims. Uh, um, Matt Walsh is just, I don't know. Matt Walsh is just, he's just, he's, he's very sussy. All of this is incredibly sussy. Anyways, he wrote a, a tweet about it. So according to my social media feed, Josh Drucker did bad things a long time ago, which disproves fish Christianity. Fascinating logic. It's just, why, why does he always have to act so bitchy about everything? You know what I mean? Why is he always, why is he got to act like such a bitch every time he opens his mouth? There's an argument for the kid not entirely being at fault here. I mean, like. My, I think we do need to treat minors and adults differently when they commit crimes. Absolutely. Not the victims, but like the people who committed the crimes. Yeah. But the way he's going about this is just like, it seems like what he's really offended about is not the like molestation. It's the, <laughs> okay. Anyways. Um, and then, and then here's this. I'm not too proud to admit when I was wrong. So yes, I was wrong about the drugger situation. If you recall several months ago, it was revealed that, and we don't have to read this again. This revelation uh, was used by many anti-Christian folks to prove that Christians are all hypocrites and the whole family things was a sham. This part's true, but it's not just all, but it's not like all Christians, it's conservatives. I wrote a post in the early days of the story pointing out that the liberal outrage over the sexual abuse seems to be rather selective and insecure. What the fuck? I uh, further said that Christian ideals just don't disprove that. Um, I stand with the first two parts of my argument. Just in the last hour ago, Josh admitted publicly to affairs. So this is no longer alleged. He went from sexual abuser to sexual to serial adulterer. These are the facts. What? 
this is what this is what gets you to write your I can't believe this is what gets you to write your apology not the not the like take on your abuse stuff but okay Ashley Madison is a dating app he was on Ashley Ashley Madison is real it was hacked and just a few records of 30 million adulterers were released Josh is one of the 30 million just in the last hour or two Josh publicly admitted to the affairs uh, so it's no longer a legend on the profile, Josh admits to looking for one night stands and experimentation and other things uh, in that vein. It's disgusting. The man has a wife and several kids. This is what he's mad about. He, he makes a he makes a post calling out. OK. All right. It's just it's just the adultery thing is that the, the, that he cares about. OK, <laughs> we live in a sick world. This is unironically how he ends how he ends it. We live in a sick world, everyone. He is he's he's the Joker. He is the Joker. We live in a sick, we live in a sick world. We live in a sick world. Yeah, you know what? You're right. We do live in a sick world. There's like a couple of things from Matt Walsh that I miss. Sorry, whoopsie. But as in general, like what should we advise people to do as a general policy? We should obviously advise them to get married younger. Huh? Huh? Matt, what? No. The, isn't it like statistical that these days, like when you get married younger, you have a higher probability of getting a divorce, like getting, like getting married, like younger is not like that good for you. You shouldn't be hunting for marriages when you're young. You should be like worrying about like getting a job, getting a career, becoming stable, and then, and then be able to like keep up meaningful relationships and not like work on getting like a husband. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One reason is that biology exists, okay, despite what we hear from the left. Biology is a real phenomenon. And what that means is that our biological clocks are ticking, especially for women. So if you wait until your mid-30s to get married, it might be too late to have a family. My wife is married with our number five and six right now, okay? And uh, five and six? Because we like to do, we like to double up when we have kids. And they're already telling her she's 35. They told her this is a, this technically counts as a geriatric pregnancy at the age of 35. That's real. So she's like, that's what it is. So you're gonna wait until you're in geriatric pregnancy mode to get married to begin with? Doesn't make a lot of sense. And also the other point is that you can. So you can. I don't know. I don't, what's average age for women to have their first baby? 30. So the average age for women these days to have their first baby is 30. 35 and 30 are not the same. I must say. Average age for women to get married. Uh, female participants, 33 on average and 35 for men, typically. So people typically get married when they're like 34. I mean, like, it's just some people don't want kids or they can put their eggs on ice. Bitches be putting their eggs on ice these days. You know, it happens. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, if you want, if, I think the people who want like a family already know that they want to have kids earlier. You know what I mean? Some people don't. That's that's okay. That's fine. Actually, it doesn't work that well. I, okay, that's fine. It happens. It's his life. People seem to think that like getting married later and then having the possibility of not having kids is better than rushing to get kids and, and, and get married. That if you get married younger, then you're building a life with someone rather than building your adult life first and then trying to inject somebody else into it. And that can cause problems because then you feel like, well, this is mine. This is my life. Relationship you feel like expert? they're intruding on it. There's real value in starting young and like being on the ground floor together as you build your life together. So that's terrible advice. Let's uh, check out the next one. <laughs> you're right, Matt. That is terrible advice. No, um, you need to. So here's the thing. You should be building like your own life and have your own things going on. You can't once you like, here's the thing. No matter what, I don't care when you get married, why you get married or what you'll always have your own lives, period. You will always have your own lives. You're never not going to have your own lives and you do need your own lives um, and your own things that you do and like and enjoy. It's very, 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 very unlikely that you're going to be like living a life with somebody and you don't care about like having your own life and own friends and own things that you need to do. Um, you should have your things to that you, that you have of yourself because a lot of the times what happens is that people get really like resentful and they get like, and they like fist, like feel like they lost things when they're, uh, when, when they like run through that stuff when they're younger, instead of just like living their lives as like, you know, as like growing adults more than anything else.
You should be doing that. You should have your own life and have somebody that works with it. So you so you can both hit the ground running, not like stumble and try and, and try to get there. Right. Because what if it takes you like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years to be able to get your life going because you're trying to do it together? It's like running um like a like a three legged race or something together. Like it doesn't always work out just like that. You know, you can't just like hit the ground running like that. I would much rather like and, and as somebody who's like old enough to be able to like think about like starting to get married or like building like a, a longer lasting relationship with somebody i would much rather want a girl who has her shit together than like a girl who doesn't you know what i mean i don't, I don't want to marry i don't want to like get a relationship with a kid you know what i mean